Hi everyone, and uh, welcome back to the Summer Cup, uh, Coulson Summer Cup. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I had another exam in round three, so hence no video and another bye. Uh, but we're back for round four, and this game was something else. It took three <laughs> hours. I was completely tired afterwards, and my brain was starting to melt, as we will see, as there's such an obvious mistake that I'll make later on in the game. Um, which is really sad, because I think without this move, uh, I'd be beyond happy with this game. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, a bit about my opponent. Um, I had no preparation going on to this game. I found one game from him in 2013, so eight years ago, that somebody randomly had put online. Um, in which he played the close to Sicilian. Um, so uh, into e4, I normally play the Sicilian, and um, in that game he played the close to Sicilian. So I have done some preparation against close to Sicilian, as I need to know anyway, um, but he did not. So we'll see what actually happens in the game. Again, this that game was from 10 years ago, so I would have been surprised if he still plays the same thing 10 years later. Uh, but old habits die hard. Um, so, e4, c5, Sicilian play, and knight f3, uh, so this is the more standard approach, open Sicilian, far more games in this position, nothing wrong with the close Sicilian, it's just this is how people play. Uh, I played d6, I want to go into sort of Nydorf, uh, Dragon, Scheveningen setups, that's what I prefer, um, and he plays uh, h3. Now, this move, there's actually nothing wrong with this move, and it looks wrong at first, but if you look into the database, and if you go one move further, knight f6, um, knight c3, we can see that very top players have played it, Nakamura, MVL. It just seems odd over the board when you're so used to knight f3, d4, very traditional open Sicilian kind of structures. But because of this, because he doesn't play d4, in this game, we have a very unique Sicilian. It's not very traditional, and, like it's not open, uh, but similarly, it's not a Grand Prix attack. There's no f4 because the knight is blocking it. So, this is quite different from what I'm used to. Um, but nonetheless, I go knight uh, c6. Often, when I'm playing against Sicilian sidelines, um, again, uh, I'll just show. You. Uh, against the normal variation, my my idea is normally to play e6 and get this small center, Scheveningen, <laughs> Dutch word, need to learn how to pronounce it properly. Um, but against other variations of uh, Sicilians or the sidelines, I found that the dragon um, with the fianchetto is a very good... Um, set up and because black ha white hasn't played the main line it's much harder to be aggressive against the setup um so when i'm facing people who don't play the main top theory moves this is the pun they go for um so yeah um just being catering bishop c4 is a pretty normal move so pop again a3 now when people play like this, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, black isn't winning, and I think that I sometimes make the mistake of going, oh, he's wasted so much tempo, I must be ahead. And you have to be... Something I need to teach myself to do better is to realise I am playing black, I am not playing white. If I if I was white in the situation, this is, would obviously be a bit more devastating. And black can't normally waste tempo like this. But as he's white, he's in this situation, he's kind of just given up his advantage. The position is now quite equal. Black has reached equality quite easy on early on without much struggle. But um, I need to make sure that I don't uh, go over the top and start attacking or being aggressive just because he's played one slightly slow move. Um, so I'm happy in this case, in this game, because I actually learned from previous mistakes in other games when I've gone out too quickly. So I just played normal moose castles, castles. A6, uh, very normal, typical idea in the Sicilian. A6, B6, Bishop, 
B7, just expanding on the queen side, um, making use of the extra space, because uh, normally white will fight on the king side. However, it is much harder for him in this case because the knight's sort of blocking his normal typical f4 break against um, the dragon, which is why I kind of like the dragon in this situation. Um, castles, castles, going for this idea. Um, I did later find out through analysis that this was also here, um, but this is um, after a bit of play. Uh, white is black is for choice because of this nice bishop. These pieces are coming out to nice squares quite easily, um, but this is still equal. Um, as nice as it was tactically, there's nothing too crazy to come out of this. But it would be a more typical open Sicilian structure, so maybe that's perhaps why a human would want to go into it. Um, but again, this plan nothing wrong with it either. Bishop g7, getting this nice diagonal. Um, now bishop g5, typical idea against the dragon is to create a battery, trade off black's great uh, dark square bishop, then you provoke all of these dark square weaknesses around the king and go on an attack. Um, in this case, um, I played h4 to h6, sorry, uh, to sort of kick the bishop away, which is fine. Um, and it just prevents this idea immediately, but it doesn't really do anything. But again, I wasn't too sure what else to do in this situation. Um, perhaps I could have gone for my pawn push, or um, I could have expanded with my knights developed. Uh, but again, there's nothing wrong with this move. It's completely fine. Uh, it's <laughs> um, knight c6. This move, not ideal, blocking the diagonal, knight probably blonged on d2, but again, not a major mistake. Um, queen d2, going for the battery, uh, h5, I went for h5 rather than uh, king h7, purely because I thought that uh, I'm okay if they trade the bishops, I'm going to start playing on this side of the board, and yes, it will suck to have these weaknesses around my dot squares, but he doesn't really have many pieces on the king side to exploit it, it should be fine. Both are fine choices, uh, computer slightly prefers king h7, um, but I, I was happy with the choice that I made. Uh, h5, he goes for the trade, um, I ignore it because I don't want this to happen, I don't want him to have pressure and completely block off my king like this, it just seems inhuman to play like this, I'd rather him take me and then at least my king would control these dark squares himself. So b4 attacking. Um, often you want to dislodge this knight in the Sicilian. It's slightly different, so this is why his sort of useless move has actually come to help him, because this pawn now challenges the other pawn, and this tension will become uh, a bigger thing later down in the game. Um, but at the moment, oh, it's fine. Um, knight d5. Um, I just want to kick the knight away. I'm happy if he trades like this. This diagonal becomes even stronger with me. Sure, he can take back, but again, this will be fine for black. Uh, instead, he takes here first, I take back, and then he reroutes the knight. Here, it's I took, I think, um, because you have to be careful here. Try and spot Say, for example, if black does nothing and just plays h5, try and pause the video and try and spot where uh, white can take advantage of this and uh, show that you can't just sit around as black. There's tactics going on. So, um, of course, it's bishop takes e6. Notice that the king, the rook, and the queen are all on uh, forkable squares, pretty much and that this weakness would just be awful and you'd be losing a queen, probably losing more, um, and the game's over. And if you don't take the bishop, which is much better, because obviously you don't want to lose your queen, uh, move your king or... Um, yeah, move your king away, then bishop retreats, you've got a massive hole, you've just lost a pawn for nothing, and yeah. 
Um, lucky I spot this, so I do not just slouch around playing h5 and I defend it with my rook. Um, I need to, but in doing so I'm making a mental note to make sure that this pawn is defended, because even though my rook is now defending, this king and queen are still on forkable squares, and I just need to be aware of it to make sure that I don't fall for any tactics in the future. Um, he was also developing his rook onto the open files. Um, where we think the files were open, I guess, because none of the pawns have been traded yet. Um, again, putting the rook in opposition of the queen. Um, but the file's not going to open anytime soon, so it should be fine for me uh, to put my rooks together. Just developing. Um, also, a typical idea in Sicilian is to play d5. If I can play d5 and get away with it, then my position will probably be equal, if not better, because black tends to have long-term advantages with pawn structures. Um, here he played knight g5. Again, I need to be super careful in developing my queen to c7. I'm off the d8 square, but this tactic still works. And now, because there's two knights, he can sack against the rook as well, and this would be not good. Um... I gave this a think. I really wanted to make d5 work in this situation because this would cut off the bishop. And I think this is where I spent the longest amount of time in the game thinking. And what I missed, I managed to calculate it all and I calculated the line properly and I got to the position that uh, the computer wants. So if d5, um, if pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, he would. Uh, include this in between move. I was thinking if rook takes rook, rook takes rook, which undefends this pawn, and now he's up a pawn. What I missed, uh, no, not what I missed, I saw this move as well <laughs> uh, of queen uh, e5. Yeah, queen e5. Uh, but I wrongly assessed the situation. Um, I just thought I'm a pawn down, he can retreat the bishop, he can even take like this. Uh, the knight's defended by the queen, and this is why I didn't go for it in the end, because I saw, oh look, I'm forking the pieces, but I realised the knight's defended. But the reason why I didn't go for it is I thought that this was fine for white, and he's just up material, and maybe he can start trading even like this. But the computer is unafraid, and it thinks that black's activity is more than enough compensation. So... I, this is an example of me needing to learn how to evaluate, evaluate positions, because there's no point if I can calculate stuff if I then incorrectly evaluate it at the end and think that it's uh, not good. But I think this is a hard human decision to make. So I think I play the much more natural uh, bishop c8. Uh, if you give the computer time, it actually prefers this move over d5, so I was actually pretty happy that I came up with this move. It's simply just defending e6 by force. Um, the bishop's a bit misplaced here, but it can always come back out. Uh, the rooks don't necessarily need to be on these files just yet. Um, he plays knights f3. This is sort of an omission that his previous idea was just a trick. Um, he had no other plan apart from just taking on e6 and sort of hope that I wouldn't see it. Uh, luckily I did. Um, game continues. Um, h5, just defending this pawn in case there are trades. Also, I'd like to keep control of this c6 squared so the queen can't come here and pin the knight because I no longer have a pawn on e6 defending the knight. This knight is undefended, is only defended by the king. Uh, and tactics may come with that. That just would be unpleasant. Uh, defending. Uh, Rerouting his knight. Um, it turned out fine in the game, and it just it just gives the initiative to black. And again, I'm looking all the time to play d5. Now he's blocked his rook, so there's no tactics against rook takes rook. Um, this knight is also no longer controlling the d5 square itself, so it just seems the perfect time to play d5. Play d5, why not? Um, he reroutes the knight. Just now redefending the pawn. This seemed fine. Again, this is the second time I make the correct 
uh, tactical calculation but the incorrect analysis so option one in this position is just take the pawn uh, he can't take with a pawn because the queen would be hanging so the only move is take with a knight, take with a rook take like this um, so knight takes, knight takes, rook takes and I got to this position and I didn't really see anything um, apart from bishop b7 and I thought oh this is a nice tactic perhaps I can move the knight somewhere it'll open up uh, get a discover attack so but there wasn't anything concrete I couldn't see where the knight would go where there would be a nice attack so to sort of undo all of this I played bishop b7 first and now that e6 is no longer a threat the bishop's much better here but the downside of this is that obviously if I'm now allowed to take and the whole situation continues I'd be up a tempo basically but you have to know what your opponent's going to do and he doesn't have to just stand there and not take the pawn or sit around uh, both pushing and taking are good for white and this is why the computer and I should have preferred the other line is simply this is just slow and passive yes it improves the position but there are tactics of foot, I need to act quickly. He pushes. Um, I have two choices here, knight back to d7, knight h7. Um, interested what other people play here. I played knight a7 just because I want to defend the g5 square, so there's no tactics that this doesn't work because I can take the hood queen. Whereas if my knight was on here, then this might be unpleasant and there could be stuff. Uh, perhaps a draw at the very least. Uh, what does the computer say? It probably gets the defense. Yeah, this is good for white, even. He's sacked to base. So, uh, just knight h7, stopping all of this. Queen f4. Now, this is where sort of the downside of playing this move has come into place. This pawn is becoming an outpost, and there are ideas against my king in the future <laughs> um, that you can play. And perhaps inaccurate by me, definitely inaccurate by me. Um, I just want to move my pieces over to the king side to protect it, because he does have pieces over there, but they're not super coordinated, so as long as I have a few defenses, it should be fine. Um, knight g5, threatening the pawn, knight f5, just redefending, also blocking the attack. Um, he decides to trade at this point. I'm happy with that. If he's trading on the king side, then this is where all of his play is. And then once the play on the king side sort of goes away, we can go back over to the queen side. And this is where I have to push the advantage. Um, although it's not a winning advantage, it's at least I get to dictate the game. Whereas over here, he's, uh, he's getting to decide what's going on. Um, yeah. Um, so queen g5. I'm not too sure what he's thrusting this position. I had the right idea as here as well. Um, that I should be trading and then playing on the queen side. But rather than going for what I did was trading the knights, taking pawn takes. Computer actually thinks pawn takes is better, but as a human I think surely queen takes is better, unless there's something that I'm missing. But yeah, I it just for an end game that's about to happen because pieces are about to get traded. It just seems odd to do that. Um, and now Queen uh, E7 just offering to trade. And if he refuses to trade, then perhaps I get more activity from this position that I did over here. Um, which the computer actually preferred this idea first um, because I guess it evaluates my knight is better than his knight. So. If he's going to trade, maybe do it on my terms, perhaps. Uh, you can't do that because I'll take the knight. But you, you get the idea. Um, the game itself, he trades queens. I'm really happy at this point. Again, the, it should be a draw, but all the players happening for me, I can make all of the improvements. I don't really have many weaknesses here apart from the f7 pawn. It's my only really like backwards pawn, and perhaps c5 but these are 
this one I can easily defend, and this one I can always get rid of by pushing. So he goes off to the pawn, it's currently defended. I'm looking to push for c5, for c4, so I enforce it with my bishop because currently he controls it twice. Um, he then puts his rook up, which is fine, sort of. It. The reason for this maneuver is often to prevent the pushing of this pawn, but I was never really going to push this pawn anyway. It's not a bad move, it's just doesn't do too much with the position because even if he doubles up I can always just protect it when the king across. And this might be a liability. Um, so I go for my pawn push as it's still defended. Um, he sort of shuts down the center but now I have three against three and perhaps something could come of this. Still a complete draw uh, but I'm the one playing for something, so I could have offered a draw at this point, but why offer a draw when I'm the one that's actually in control of the situation? Um, I take, because I want to get my rook on the file first, so I control it. Um, he could try and fight back against it, but then I'm eventually going to be controlling the file still. So uh, he pushes. Also the idea of pushing is that he doesn't if I'm able to get this move in, then his bishop is stuck against this pawn. It can't come this way either, because it'd be stuck by its own pawn. And his position would just be even more cramped, so uh, c3 is sort of needed. Uh, now I just infiltrate with my rooks. Again, I'm just going for tempo, activity. It should be defendable by white. Um, this move I didn't see. <laughs> um, I expected him to play... I don't know why I expected him to play actually, because he has to defend the bishop. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe rook f2 is the only move. But I was just surprised by the only move, which is not a good thing. <laughs> but rook f2. Uh, bring my rook across, so if he takes, I can take back, and I still have the same control. He, of course, doesn't allow that, and he pushes up. But now he's perhaps left his back rank, which might be an issue, but it's still completely a draw. Takes, takes. Uh, move my king, I want to start pushing these pawns, because because this pawn earlier moved and is no longer connected, he now has more pawn islands than I do, and although it doesn't look like it, if I can trade this pawn for this pawn, I then would have a 3 on 2 where these pawns can't interact and my two pawns can sort of hold his three pawns back quite easily. Um, so I go for this plan, just start trading and moving my king up. Um, continue to trade down, so it'd be two against one. He plays intermezzo move, but I can just move it out of the way, protecting the pawn. Also protecting against this rook infiltrating. Uh, this is, a, again, I'm going to say drawish, but I'm the one controlling the files. Uh, so I'm the only one that's really going to be playing for a win. It's hard for him to expand over here. Now, rook f1. It's really hard in this position to come up with a move for white. And they are almost in Zogzwang in that there's no good moves to make. There's no, There are some bad moves, but there are no good moves to make. And whilst this is a draw, really white should be looking for repetition at this point. Um, and not allowing my rook to infiltrate again. Um, because after rook f1, rook uh, b2 is a massive problem. And it's even more of a problem than I thought it was. Uh, because when I saw this move, I thought, Oh, I'm attacking the bishop. If the bishop moves, that's quite passive. I even thought about this because he his the def the pawns also attacked as well as the bishop. Obviously, I just take the bishop. Um, so I thought the only move would have been rook c2. Now this is still losing for white, and I didn't see this at the time, and I think this is really hard to see. Um, so I'm going to play a few more moves of rook takes, king takes. Um, Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. And now in this position, there are only two moves which effectively transpose to the other, which win the game for black. Everything else is a draw. 
and I didn't see this far ahead, and perhaps take some time to calculate this if you want to, <laughs> but this is really quite something. The only two winning ideas, or one winning idea with two moves sort of transposing towards each other, is king c6. The reason being is that your bishop is going to come back to c8, go up to uh, f4, f5, and then either protect this these pawns from the bishop, and then also capture these pawns on the king's side. And eventually you'll get it so that you'll win some pawns and start pushing and taking. It's really hard to calculate though, because surely bishop... Um, B1 would defend against this, you're sort of guarding this diagonal, white has no other moves, just keep guarding the diagonal. Um, but you can play this anyway, and if black goes to trade, the problem is, is that you then have to defend uh, against the pawn from pushing. Um, and if I probably messed up the order slightly, but effectively this pawn will push down, the king then has to guard it, and then the king can swoop in and get this pawn, and then the rest of the pawns are fixed, and this is a winning endgame, um, as the king will be able to promote for this pawn. But if we return to this position, if you don't find king c6 or bishop c8 is the other option, this is a draw. So for example, if you want to take more space, then this is a problem, because now you're, you're down a tempo. It's not the same thing. Black, white is in time. And it just shows how vicious end games can be. Um, and I would have been really happy with myself if I saw this, but I'm glad that this isn't what happened in the game, because I probably wouldn't have done. Um, but if we go back to this position, um, white instead played bishop b1. And the problem with this move is now I can shut the bishop out completely for the rest of the game um, with e4, because the bishop's stuck it this way, it can't come back this way. The only way it could get into the game is if it somehow did this, um, even then it's blocked over here, and it would be taken by the rook. Um, perhaps I guess it would go this way, that makes more sense. Um, but this is just not good for for white, and this pawn is still hanging that he has to defend. This is just a major issue. Um, so my opponent takes a perhaps a humanly practical approach and goes to the sack to see if there's anything else, because if we go to this position, yeah, minus five. Um, which seems strange, even though the material is equal. It's just I've managed to build up all that activity. And by being the active person, it's much easier for me to make okay moves, where it's much easier for him to mess up. Uh, so he takes the pawn, I take back. He plays c5. I'm quite happy with this next move as well. Uh, you could take the pawn, but the problem with this is like the rook infiltrates. This doesn't feel great. Um, so I play king e5. So I'm still guarding these infiltration squares. If he wants to infiltrate, he has to go all the way back here, but he wouldn't have tempo against my bishop. Um, he plays uh, pawn d6. Um, don't fall for the trap and draw the game, is <laughs> all I can say, um, which I don't. Um, I bring my bishop back. It's slightly more accurate to play this way around so that the rook wouldn't have tempo when the bishop comes back. Um, but this is what I saw, just defending from the pawn promoting. If I stop this pawn, then I'm just up a bishop and I will slowly win this game. Um, he brings the rook back with tempo. I block and make sure that I'm still guarding this square. I was looking at lines with either um, king uh, rook e8 or rook d8. If rook e8, then I can just take here and it's fine. I would almost panic for a second thinking I was pinned and maybe can play this, but you can just take the pawn. Um, if he plays rook d8, um, then I can just bring my rook back. He can't push this. Eventually I'll put my rook here. He'll either have to trade or give up the pawn. And uh, my position's quite nice. Um, but instead, and this is a real sadness because I'm really happy with this game. I'm quite proud of it. He plays rook g8 
and I didn't see this even in the game, I didn't see it afterwards, I only saw this through my analysis, and this is, yeah, uh, I just take the form. Um, what's interesting is that I'm so far ahead at this point, the computer doesn't consider this is, this is a blunder, I've put the blunder icon in myself, because humanly, obviously, this is just completely winning, he would resign here, it's so much easier to play. But because I'm already winning, the computer doesn't consider this a blunder. Um, because, um, I, yeah, this goes to show computers don't play like humans. Um, but yeah, uh, I've got nothing to say about this move. Um, it's really sad because I was really happy with this game, but uh, it's still winning. I just need to make sure I don't make these kind of mistakes that or actually game losing or game drawing. Uh, he takes the pawn. Uh, I take his pawn back because I just don't want to make sure that's the only real counterplay he has. Um, he goes after my pawns, I start trading. I think perhaps it would have been better for him to take here, but then if he does that then all of this falls and it's not ideal either way, it's just a losing position. Uh, he takes in the centre, uh, I defend my pawn, I also Block is of Rook's defense of uh, g3. He tries to defend it, but then this just means that my Rook that was sort of awkwardly placed and can't be in the game now gets back into the game again. Um, and it's aligned itself with all these pawns. Um, he goes after mine, but it's still defending this side, but I can just take. And although he will be two pawns to my one, uh, the extra bishop and the fact that my pawn is far more advanced. Uh, it's just too much, and he does try to advance the pawns, but um, it is a bit awkward to try and rearrange this, but effectively the setup that I wanted is that my rook would be somewhere on this rank, but not this square, so that when my bishop comes to this diagonal, it defends against any queening possibilities, but it also uh, protects the uh, h1 square. Um, I don't think... Uh, and if, uh, for example, yeah, it's white to move. For example, if um, white goes for this, hoping that his pawns will get there in time, they're not connected. These two pieces can get back in time quite easily. Um, it should be completely winning for um, black still. But yeah, so this is my idea. He goes in to give some checks. It is a bit awkward. But as long as I stay calm, this should be fine. Um, I bring my rook across, also sort of protecting the square and making sure the king can't come across and try some checkmates. Um, and it means that I can go for this idea that I talked about. Um, he starts checking me, but I'm just going to move my king towards the rook and eventually I'll catch up to the rook and he'll either have to sacrifice um, or come back this way and I get a queen and the game's over. Um, and even though my king has sort of moved to the way to this side of the board, my pieces are still fast enough to stop these pawns, so it's still winning. Um, but yeah, that's the game. Uh, he resigned. <laughs> I was really happy with this game. Um, definitely, there are a lot of inaccuracies played, um, and apart from missing the rook, I didn't really make any blunders this game, which I was happy about. Um, but I definitely need to work on plans and strategies, because the evaluation bar keeps jumping between plus one and minus one, not because anyone's losing a pawn anywhere, but just because each player had the initiative at various points during the game, and both of us didn't seize on it. But considering this was a 62 move game, played over for three hours, hence partly I hope why I miss, <laughs> missed the taking of the rook, uh, I was pretty happy with this. Um, and this means that I've got two wins. Unfortunately, because of the two buys, um, I'm not as high a points as I hopefully could have been, but maybe I would have lost those games anyway. Um, but if I keep winning, especially if I win against the current uh, leader, luckily for me the two current leaders also weren't available this week and both had buys, so perhaps I could catch them and uh, that would be interesting. And perhaps I can win back my uh, admission fee, which would be fun. Uh, but yeah. Stick around, hopefully I'll be able to play next week, and uh, it won't be a fortnightly thing anymore. Um, but yeah, cheers, bye.